the Lord. Praise the living Yahushua. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to today's service. Thank you for being with us physically. And those of you who are watching us on the net, may God Almighty bless you. Invite your friends to join you, join us, your family members, as we go on. Amen. Amen. I remember to subscribe to our channel, like our videos, more importantly, share our videos with other people. Even as we share it with you, please share it with other people so that they too will be blessed. Press the notification button so that you get to know when we upload new videos. The church we are ministering from is the Christ Gospel Truth International Ministries in the state of Nigeria. And my own name is Pastor Yemi Omogoyeka. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to appreciate you this day. We thank you for a new born day. We thank you, Lord, for your word says, Remember the Sabbath day. We appreciate you for the grace you granted to us to see today. Thank you also for the grace of salvation itself. Thank you, Almighty Father, for your attention to the issues of our lives. Thank you for our nation. Thank you for the world at large. Thank you for heavenly places. Thank you for the message that endures forever upon our lives. Let your name be glorified in your most glorious name. Almighty Father, we are here present before you this morning. I will come here with different challenges of our lives that we are prayed to do. Let no one leave this place today without being blessed in your holy Jesus name. Amen. Almighty Father, come for your throne of mercy. Everything that we've done that is wrong, please forgive us as we forgive those who sin against us in your holy Jesus name. Amen. As we go in your word this morning, speak with us. Amen. Guide us in your holy Jesus mighty name. We are prayed. We are going to take our Bible passage from the book of John, chapter 1. The first few verses. We will stop at where we find comfortable there. Amen. Amen. The book of John 1, from verse 1. Can someone please read to us? In the beginning, the world already existed. Yes. The world was with God. And the word was God. Mm -hmm. From the very beginning, the word was with God. Mm -hmm. Through him, God made all things. Mm -hmm. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. Mm -hmm. The word was the source of life. Mm -hmm. And this life brought light to people. Mm -hmm. The light shines in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And the darkness has never put it out. Mm -hmm. God sent his messenger, a man named John. He came to tell people about the life, mm -hmm. so that all should hear the message and the news. He himself was not the life. Mm -hmm. He came to tell about the life. Mm -hmm. This was the real life. The light that comes into the world and shines on all people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The topic we are going to examine today says the power of your tongue can take you to heaven or hell. The power of your tongue can take you to heaven or to hell. Praise the Lord. Please, let's all read the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 46, I guess. Matthew 12, 46. Jesus was still talking to the people when his mother and brothers arrived. Mm. They stood outside asking to speak with him. No. So that's not where we want. Matthew 12, 46. No, the one that has to do with the tongue. Amen. Not the James. Yes. Amen. 
I okay, I do charge or something. That is Matthew 12, 36. Matthew 12, 36, yes. I do charge, yes. You can be sure that on the judgment day, uh -huh. you will have to give account of every useless you word. You will have to give account of every useless word you have ever spoken. You have ever spoken. Your words will be used to judge you. Your words will be used to judge you. To declare you either innocent or guilty. To declare you to go to hell or to declare you to go to heaven. Please go ahead. Then some teachers of the law and some Pharisees spoke up. Okay. Teacher, they said, we want to see you perform a new Okay. You? Let's not go into digression as the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the priests were trying to make Christ to digress. They knew how to dribble and turn his attention from what is the focus. Our focus this morning is that our tongue can send us to hellfire or to heaven. You've heard from that Bible passage, Matthew 12, 36, that every word that you utter from your mouth, you will account for them on the day of judgment. They will either declare you innocent or guilty. I pray, may my words never declare me guilty before the throne of mercy in your most name. Amen. Amen. May your own words never condemn you before the Lord in your most name. Amen. May our words not send us to hell in your most name. Amen. Now, information is part of life. Information dissemination is part of life. Now, we want to look at a one of the methods by which you disseminate information to people is through the word of our mouth. Amen. Amen. Through the word of our mouth. We have been told from the foundation of the earth, the word has been there. According to John 1. Then the word was there at the beginning of the creation. It is with the word that the earth was created. You remember? Genesis 1, verse 1 to 26, where God was making pronouncements. Decree and everything coming to the earth. In the, at the very beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And what He first created was light. And so on. Later on, He created the sun, the moon, He created the animals. He created the oceans, he created the valleys, the mountains, everything. And finally, in verse 26, he decreed that, you know, again, he now said everything was created by word. But when he wanted to create man, he did not decree man out. No. He said, let us create man in our own image. Let us. You see, every other thing was pronounced to come to be. But man and woman were not decreed. The Lord took physical, did a physical, um, took a, 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 a physical decision to create man. But before he did it, even when the word is again, he still said to the People that tell those that are within, that is Christ, number one, the Holy Spirit, number two, himself, number three. He decreed, he called and said, This one, we have to do it together. He said, Let us create man in our own image. 
And he gave the reason so that they will be the head of everything we have created. They will dominate the head, they will manage the head, they will do everything. Men, men, men and female, he created them on the, 20, on, the 20, uh, on the sixth day. Amen. Before he rested. But all the same, he still spoke out that let us do this. That is why you will see that anything you want to do today, you will first of all think them out in your heart and then you make pronouncement of them. And after that one, you carry out the action. So God went into action after pronouncing the word of creation. Amen? Amen. Then he took some time, he made man, breathed life to him, and from the man, he brought out a woman, both of them came alive. So everything we do on earth starts and ends with words. Amen. Amen. Everything we do on earth starts and ends with words. Amen. 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 You want to build a house, you will think of it in your heart, you will speak it out, and you put your pen on paper, and you start just like Christ said. Who amongst you want to build a house? You not first of all sit down and calculate the cost before going into action to see whether the money he had would complete the project. That even if he doesn't have enough money, he just goes ahead and begins to build that at a stage when he's unable to finish it that the world will mock him. That why did he start a project he we cannot complete? May that not be our portion in your wish last day. So our words are very important. Please let's look at the proverbs that we read this morning. Uh, Proverbs what? Proverbs 10. Proverbs 10. And then from, please start reading that Proverbs 10. We want to hear the power of words here again. Amen. Proverbs Amen. 10 from, kindly come closer so that your voice will be properly Proverbs 10 verse 11. And come nearer so that you can, your word can be heard. And the rest of you. A good person's words. A good person's words. A fountain of life. A good person. A good. Take note of that adjective. A good person's words. A fountain are, of life. A, a fountain of life. Yes. But a wicked person's words. Oh, the wicked person's words. Hide a violent nature. Hide a violent nature. It has a violent nature. You see, with your tongue. You can give life. With your tongue, you can destroy life. Amen. Amen. And it could be that you destroy your own life or you build your own life. You destroy the life of other people or you build the lives of other people. You destroy the life of a nation or you build the life of a nation. It depends on who you are. If you are a good person, the words that will come out of your mouth will be to build rather than to destroy. But if you are a wicked one, have you not heard? Some people have made a lot of decrees upon their own lives that they can never do well in this world is a pronouncement. And so we say, ah, difficult as things are, there is no way out for them. Some will say that their own have spoiled. Some will say that they are going to waste away. Some will say, some will even go to the point of rebooking themselves, rebooking their husbands, rebooking their wives, rebooking their children, rebooking their family members. Rebooking their country, rebooking even the world at life. I want to tell you today that instead of you going into despair and pronouncing evil words 
which must surely come to pass as you pronounce them, so shall it be. If you pronounce evil upon yourselves, you will reap evil. If you say, difficult as Nigeria is, that I will have a way out, that God will make a way out for me. Don't you hear what the Bible says that? When they say there is a casting down, that's what some people know how to pronounce. But you will say there is a lifting up. Terrible as the situation may be in the world all over, I know as my living, as my human limit, that I am not going to waste away. I am going to fulfill my destiny. I know it shall be well with me all the days of my life. I know it shall be well with my children. I know it shall be well with my family. I know it shall be well with my wife. I know it shall be well with my work. I know it shall be well with my health. I know that everything that I lay my hands upon shall prosper. I know that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And that every tongue that rises against me in judgment shall be put to shame. I know that enemies are there, but that they shall not overcome and overpower me. I know in my career I'm going to make a good success out of it. I know in my education I'm going to come out with flying colors. I know I am going to excel in everything that I do. I know that I am not going to start in poverty and end in poverty. I know that the best of the things of this world, I will enjoy before I leave this world. And I know that heaven is my portion because I trust in him who dwells in heaven and who actually planned for me to come and reign with him at the end of my sojourn in this world. Amen. Amen. As you pronounce to yourself, so shall it be. Mm -hmm. I know that no matter what it is, Nigeria is going to be so good. Nigeria is going to be an envy of the world. I know that Nigeria is going to be a superpower. I know that Nigeria is not going to break. Those of them who rose up now and say they want to seize power on ethnic background, on ethnic grounds, they have given up on Nigeria. Forgetting that even the Yoruba nation, whatever they call their high population, that they are struggling for, that even as, assuming that they get it, the way Nigeria is running is the way they will run that one. Instead of us to unite together and begin to pray for Nigeria, and begin to do what will advance Nigeria. Some people are wasting their energy upon trying to seize power. <coughs> the power that they do not even know what to do with it. Amen. Amen. So, if you despair, what they are doing is like someone who has given up. Believing that if he takes over power, he will do better. I want to tell you, Apart from God Almighty, there is no one, no human flesh that can take over that perform magic over Nigeria. It's only God that will guide whosoever the leadership is to do what is right. Because just like Romans 3 23 says, For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. If those of you are taking for power now, guess there you do worse. Why don't we gather together now and begin to pray for our nation? work for our nation. The work we are doing now is the work of iniquity. They put you in one little position is corruption. They put you in one, in, even in the church of God, is corruption. Your work cannot be trusted. Everybody is greedy for gain. These are the things that are destroying us. We are looking at the MFLS case, for instance. Look at how much wealth he has amassed. And look at what he is facing today. Are you saying that God is not working? If God did not give room for this kind of thing to happen, to expose 
What is that? In fact, what this story of Ephesians should do for us is to educate us on look in that little position you find yourself. Uphold your integrity. Work in the interest of the masses. Work in the interest of the masses, not in your own personal interest. Amen. And if you do this in the family, life will be stable. If you do it in your church, life will be stable. If you do it anywhere you go, in the organization you work, everything will go on well. Amen. But because we have sealed up our mind, we decided to say, just go there and be still. Amen. All that is happening to us today started with what we conjecture in our hearts. We want to steal. We start stealing. We want to do evil. We start doing evil. The words of our mouth, I remember when I was young, I decreed upon my, my own life that poverty is not going to be my portion. I rejected it. And I thought of what to do to be poverty. And I realized that I have to labor with my hands. And today, my life is better than the life of my parents. Amen. Because I said, I'm not going to be put poverty to my children. Financial poverty, spiritual poverty, no. And by the special grace of God, I know that I will accomplish in Yehoshua's name. So what you decree is what you get. Now, many of us, you remember the passage we read, Matthew 12, 36, that says every word that you say, and there are different categories of words. There are the negative words, there are the positive words. The ones you said that scatter the whole place, you will be accountable for it. The one that you said that builds the whole place, you will be accountable for it. Amen. Amen. Even the one you decree upon your own life, you will be accountable for them when you get to heaven. So then let us think that Bible even condemns what is called idol charts. Our dark home. God says you will account for such statements. Amen. You went and took your father or mother's property. He said, after all, it's my father or mother's property. He doesn't have anything. Bible says, woe unto the child that steals his parents' property. And say, after all, it is my direct soul. No. 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 Uh, Bible curses such people. Amen. That is why I do not say something is my father or my mother's father. I'm just thinking nothing will happen. Mm. We need to be very careful. You know, it is the, the mouth with which we are expressing nothing will happen. Nothing will happen. But a lot will happen because we are told in Matthew 12. 36, that you will, be, you will account for the word. That is why what you say will either take you to heaven or to hell. May the hell portion never be our portion in your virtuous name. Mm -hmm. Let us mind what we say at any point in time. It's like that thing that says, I know and I am certain and I'm so sure that if today is bitter, my tomorrow shall be sweet. If my today is rough, my tomorrow shall be well. It shall be well with every one of us in your which way. From today onwards, never utter negative utterances to anybody anymore, anymore, including yourself, including your children, including the nation. Including the world. There is hope for the world, no matter how terrible it is. Because Christ has come to pay the price of our sins. So, no matter what is happening today, there is hope. And I want to tell you the power of the tongue saved Rahab, the prostitute. Today, she's a candidate of heaven. And not only that, through her lineage, Christ came. Amen. The Bible passage that we read, Mommy, could you please locate it? 
That will be the half portion. Let's quickly get that. The real half portion. Let me be narrating the story. I will go just to what you will read. Amen. Amen. The story was when Joshua took over from Moses. I pray. When you are about to get to your promised land, whatever will deny you of getting to that promised land, a few days, a few hours, a few minutes, a few seconds to the time, that will deprive you of that getting to that promised land. May it not happen to you in Joshua. Mm -hmm. Moses was very, very upright. But unfortunately, it remains only three days for them to take over Jericho. And God said, Look at it, you will see it, you will not get there. That will not be your portion. Mm -hmm. That will not be my portion. Mm -hmm. And what did Moses do? He was angry. When you are angry, and you speak angrily to your wife, to your husband, to your children, to your family. God is there, noting them down. I'll be repeating this thing. If we can have something with which we are recording the message we are doing now, it is not a difficult thing for God to play the video of our lives. We will be, it will be accountable because they will play the video before us. We shall see it. Amen. The Lord will help us in Yahushua's name. Amen. Now, when they were to take over, Joshua sent two men to Jericho to go and spy the place. And these two men went straight to the Harlock's place. Now, they went to the Harlock's place, and that woman accommodated them. But no sooner than they got there, that informants, amen. amen. Social media is there for us today, amen. Gossip all over the place. Is gossip good? Is it bad? Or is it something we can avoid? Abide? Let us look at the definition of gossip first. What is the definition of the word gossip? What is the definition? Do we have it, ma? The definition of gossip. Casual or unconstrained conversation. Casual or unconstrained conversation. Conversation. Casual. Something that you don't bother about. It doesn't even occur to you that it is um, important. Or sometimes you don't even you didn't check out your facts, or you didn't bother whether it is true or is false. Amen. You know today there is the gossip industry. The question now is, can we remove gossip? Gossip will not have been bad if what we say is correct. Gossip is a means of Passing information across. You pass it just well, without checking whether it is true or is false. Amen. Amen. You just say it. And the person to whom you say it will carry it to another person like that until it gets to social media that the message goes to the entire world. You cannot stop people from passing information. They will say it as they see it. But what is important is when the matter is investigated, let's look at the process in that passage. The process is that when they went to that place, went to Rehab's place, and people got to know that the Israelites were there to spy the place. They went to inform the king at the first, very first time. They did not come to Rehab to confirm whether these people that came, whether they came and who are they, what are they to do? And so they just went ahead and told the king that look, a mountain world who trouble has landed, that the Israelites have come to spy. They said they have come to spy, and they are correct too. Amen. That was why they came. But those people didn't, they just made it up casually. They went and told the king. Then the king now said, Oh, let us verify. Go to Rehab. And ask her, who are these people that came to you? What have they come for? But by the time they came up to, they found that it was true. So if the gossip 
that you are carrying is having a correct information, it will not be a bad thing. It will be a good thing. But if it turns out to be false, like the Bible says here, you will account for it when you get to heaven. Amen. They took their time and they informed the king. And the king says, go and check. But they found out, of course, that it was true. And Rahab eventually packaged them. And the essence was for those people to be captured. The king said, go and capture them, go and capture them. But before they knew it, God is doing his own work. And the woman housed them. Now, the conversation that came up between Rahab and the people at the end of the day. When the Rahab tricked them into going away, to go and be looking for them while they were still with her. A three days journey said, Go, go and look for her. They have left here. You see, Rahab lies there. Rahab was a prostitute by profession. She was a prostitute by um, with the word of her mouth, she's a liar. Even what she did amounted to betrayal of trust for her nation. Amen. Are we, am I making sense? Amounted to betrayal of, because she deceived the people so that they don't get a true picture. Because if she had loved her country, true, true, she would have told the truth that they would have been caught. But because God has something to do with them, they were messengers from God. God was about to do something good. And God made her to lie, allowed her to lie. And does not amount to sin to her. Amen. And the people accomplished their goal. So she made them to go three days' journey. And the, th the third day, she now released the people to go. When they would have gone and come back, not looking for death again. That was how those people escaped. Whoever God will use to deliver you, may God Himself use them perfectly in Yahushua's name. Amen. Whosoever God will use to deliver me, Amen. may God make them to perfect that work in Yahushua's name. Amen. Look at a prostitute. Look at a liar. Look at a traitor to the nation, to her nation. Become a sin. Now, to round that up, you know when they were now going, they entered into a treaty. The woman said, with her mouth, what she said saved her. Say what will save you always. Always say things that will save your neighbor. Always say things that will save your, save your nation. Always say things that will save the world. Always say things that will save Nigeria. Amen. I say that there is hope for Nigeria. I say Nigeria shall be better. I say I shall be partaker in the benefits that will come to Nigeria. That my children, children, children from generation to generation shall be partakers of such blessings. I will, will never taste of the curses. And the wrath of God shall never come upon Nigeria in Yahushua's name. Mm -hmm. So they now sat down. The woman now said, Oh, I've done this for you. See me. When it is my the time that you will come to capture this place, please save us. And say to yourself, save me, oh Lord. Save me, save me oh Lord. Save me, oh Lord. During the time of calamity, save me and my household, oh Lord. Save my nation. Save the world at large. And the woman said, please remember. And the people entered into a covenant and said, sorry. But you have to make a sign in this building. Otherwise, you too will be consumed. Then, then not only that, bring all your family members, all your relatives in. Amen. Don't be selfish in everything we are doing. Let us always remember our relatives first. Amen. Mm -hmm. Remember Nigeria first, wherever you are. Remember your siblings. Remember your parents. Remember your community. So say, save us. And they reached an agreement. 
And she spoke, and the people said, Yes, we will spare you. And on the day the thing will happen, she obeyed obedience. She obeyed the instruction, and she was saved, and her household. I pray, if the whole world is perishing, may we not perish with them. Amen. In Yehoshua's name. Amen. May we be the Noah's generation. Amen. May we be the Rahab's generation. Amen. In Yehoshua's name. Amen. Whatever it is, look at what she said with her mouth. Save her. Whatever you say here, you will account for it in heaven. Whatever is even the thought of your heart, because it is from the abundance of the heart that the words will say come down. You will account for them. May we not, never say it again in Yehoshua's name. Mm -hmm. It shall be well with us in Yehoshua's name. Mm -hmm. Don't forget. Remember, um, what's the name of this guy? Of course, you know Je Jephthah. When Jephthah was sent back, what did she did he do? He went and trained. And when they came to him, he said, What belongs to me, you will give to me. And they said, Yes, his word saved him. He regained his freedom. What is this name, child named after Solomon? Jabesh. Jabesh said, If only you will change my destiny. If you turn me from a useless person to a useful person, I will do this, I will do that. And then God answered. No, no matter what your situation is to be, if Emefele is the greatest uh, kind of wicked person you can talk of, he is now carrying the Bible. All of us in our ignorance, we are mocking this. If Emefele today, will truly and genuinely repent of his sins and reform what he has taken from the nation and turn a new leaf. Everything they make happen, don't mind uh, our Jews that are criticizing that he won't make it. Nobody has the power of judgment. He can make it. Amen. He can make it if only he desires to make it. The only thing is, he will forsake all his sins. He will start all over again. And God will help him. And he will make it. If only. You see, until you repent, you can't make it. Amen. It is the repentance of your heart that God wants. No matter how terrible, though your sins may be as red as this color, I shall make it as white as snow. Emefele is the most notorious person you can think of now. But somebody like that, there is still hope for him. If only he will give him. So, in your own case, what is it that is in your life that has separated you from God? With your mouth, you can confess. With your heart, you can repent. And all shall be over. And you that was formerly heading to hell, your mouth can bring you back to hell. May that be a portion in Yahushua's name. So nobody can say that somebody will not make it. But all I will say to you today is talk your way to heaven. Amen. Amen. Talk your way to heaven and not to hell. May the Lord God Almighty bless his words. Shall we please pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you again for this important message this morning. Message of hope. Message that turned Rahab, the prostitute, the liar, to somebody of reckon to the point that today Rahab is in the lineage of the saints. Heavenly Father, no matter what our situation may have been, whatever it is now, no matter how bad it is, please give us our trusts that will reverse the evils of our lives and turn our ways from the path of destruction to the path of salvation in Yahushua's name. Amen. I pray. Many of the angry talks that we have had in the past that are already recorded against us. 
please let our mouth come back and retrieve them, withdraw them, and let us begin now to prophesy what is due to our lives. They always show us me. Amen. Today, oh Lord God Almighty, I decree over my life, over the minds of all these people that are under the sound of my voice, whatever it is that would have taken us to hell, may God help us to use our mouths to reverse them such that we return to the path of righteousness in your worship as me. I decree over Nigeria that Nigeria, it is well with you. Amen. I decree over the presidency as well as all the three arms of government that it shall be well with you. Amen. And that God will give you special wisdom Amen. to be able to tackle the issues of the nation Amen. such that peace shall return to Nigeria Amen. and be stable there forever. Amen. I decree, O oh Lord, over the world at large, the war in Ukraine, the war in um, Israel, the war that is about is already starting between Israel and Iran. How will one nation face two countries together at the same time? If God is not by them, with that nation, please I pray. You see, we human beings cannot explain the whole thing. But we read in your word that the land of Canaan was given to the Israelites. And today, that's the land they are fighting for. And your word also says that these people will not allow the Israelites to rest. And today, God, who are we to judge? Heavenly Father, let something good come out of this Wahala. Amen. I know there is hope for the world. There is hope for Israel. And there is hope for the Palestinians. I know that there is hope for humanity. God Almighty, don't let us go into extinction. Amen. Don't let our mouths take us to extinction. Amen. In your name. Amen. At the end of the day, O oh Lord, consider us worthy to reign with you. Amen. In your Hoshua's mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 God bless you. And let us continue to do the work of salvation together. Have a wonderful day.